Thank you, Odi. Mokadi, this time. And I'm very happy to invite the next speaker, another good friend, Lior Div, the co-founder and CEO of Cyber Reason. Lior. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, what I'm going to share with you today, uh, I believe that this is uh, one of the biggest stories uh, that you're going to hear uh, that happened in the past uh, year. Uh, usually every year when it comes to cybersecurity, there is kind of a big news that's happening. Uh, for example, in 2017, it was WannaCry, the ransomware attack. Uh, after that, it was uh, Bad Rabbit. And, and before that, it was um, No Petya meaning big things that change the way that we think about cybersecurity. Are we good? We're working on it. Uh, big things that uh, basically change the, th the way that we think about cybersecurity. Um, what we have been doing uh, in the past year, uh, we have at CyberReason a team that called Nocturnus. This team is the expert in the field of cybersecurity, and they are the ones that can understand and reverse engineer almost reverse engineer almost every attack that exists out there. So in the past year, our Nocturnus team was researching an attack group from China. Basically, we uncovered everything that this group have been doing in the past year. We uncovered everything that they can do, and basically every tactic and technique that they have. On top of that, we uncovered the magnitude of the attack. In this attack, they attack more than 10 different telco in the world, mobile provider, that affected more than hundreds of millions of people in five different countries, sorry, in five different continents on 30 different countries. This is a, a large-scale attack. What I'm going to share with you today is the story about this attack, how we uncover it, and what's happened basically in the past year. So, it was winter break 2018. I was on vacation with my family, very rare occasion, um, and in 3 a.m. I get a phone call. I pick up the phone and my lead analyst, she called me and she said, hey, Lior, we have a uh, situation. Uh, usually she's not calling me, not at 3 a.m. And usually they are dealing uh, with the situation alone. So I asked her, what is so special about this occasion versus the others that we had in the past years that we have at Cyberies? And so she basically started to tell me the story and the story goes as follows. She's saying, look, we just started a proof of concept with one of the biggest telco in the world. Um, and the reason that we started this kind of uh, engagement with them is they were suspicious that something going on in their network. Basically, they had a feeling, but they weren't sure what's really going on. What they saw, the only indication that they had is that there is massive amount of data transmitted outside of the environment. When we're talking about massive amount of data, it's more than 100 giga per session. So think about it, it's quite scary. So the first thing that we did, we validate the fact that there is massive amount of data going out of the environment. Man, ma basically what we managed to do, we managed to tell them, hey, from this computer, there is a link outside to the environment and this is the data that goes out. But when we try to say this is the data, we realize that it's encrypted, meaning that we realize that we don't know what the hacker sent. The other thing that we realized is that the data was encrypted in a way that wasn't relevant to the environment, meaning that they, the telco, did not encrypt the data. So we zoomed in, and what we did, we found kind of the malware that encrypted the data. We reverse engineered it, and we managed to decrypt the data. Till that point, this was a regular story. The data goes up, we block it, nothing special. But then when we started to zoom in into the data and really understand what was the type of data that the hackers took and the real reasoning behind the scene, why they took the data, then we realized something very unique. 
we understood that we are talking about a very targeted attack. This is not an attack that somebody basically grabbed all the information about all the credit cards of an enterprise. It was super targeted, and it looked like the hackers knew exactly what they want. Basically, they were after 20 specific individuals that were a customer of these cellular providers. By saying customers, basically they had their IMSI, and they have all their IP. They knew who are the customers. What the hackers took, and this was the surprising thing, was all the information about every call that those people have been doing. Not just every call, every text message that you were sending. And the most surprising thing was that they took every location that the cellular provider had on those people. If you think about it, they managed to track those people, 20 people, in the past six months, and to know exactly where they were. When they wake up in the morning, when they drive to work, they basically track two SIM, one of the phone, one of the car. When those two were together, they knew that they are driving. When they stop, they park the car, this SIM stopped moving, and the other one starting to move. So they knew exactly what those people are doing in every step of the way. So we immediately realized that we're talking about Espionage Act. This is not a situation that some criminals grabbing some information. Basically, we realized that this is somebody that have a capability to hack to this type of organization. And, uh, and although they have access to hundreds of millions of users, they choose these specific 20 people. We analyze it and we manage to map all the tactics and techniques to a group called APT-10. APT-10 is part of the attack group that in China. But the surprising thing was that if we track everything that they did to this APT-10, it was matched completely. So one of my researchers said, maybe this is not APT-10. Maybe somebody tried to disguise themselves as APT-10 because all those tactics and techniques are so public. We'll get back into it in a few uh, moments as well. So usually you stop. You push them out, you clean the environment, and then you're done. And at the, <clears throat> sorry, at the beginning, this is what exactly we did. We weren't aware that this is APT-10 back then. We weren't aware that this is a big story as we're talking about it today. So basically, we block them, we change the environment, we push them out, and we monitor the environment. It was exactly two weeks later that this same attack group came. They came with a different set of tools. They came with a different set of tools, but this time, it's, instead of wandering through the environment and looking for the database that they needed, this time they went directly to the database that they wanted, that was the billing server, and to starting to extract information again. Of course, we blocked them again, but this time we knew that we were talking about espionage. This time we knew that it's not going to help us to keep pushing them out of the environment because we will play this cat and mouse game on and on and on. So in this type of situation, um, we have a special team that engage with our technology, and their job is to create a full situational awareness, meaning to monitor everything in the network, every endpoint, every surfer, and to really understand what ha asset the hackers have. The first thing that they managed to discover is that those hackers had access to the environment in the past seven years. Meaning we're not talking about somebody that is new to the environment, we're talking about somebody that managed to go in and out to the environment as they please. <clears throat> in this situation, what we're doing, we're starting what we call the hunting game. Because now we know that the hackers had access to the environment more than we did. They probably understand the environment better than the IT department. And more than that, the interesting thing is that the hackers probably have multiple assets in the environment. What does it mean, multiple assets? It's many capability to go in and out, probably a dormant tools and other things. So the hunting start. 
First discovery was, and I think that Udi discussed about it, first they went after a computer that they could grab the information. Using Mimikatz, they just grabbed the information as they could. But this is not what they were after. They were after the admin account. They wanted to see if they can be able to reach or to have access to the admin account. And to be honest, they managed to grab more than 10 different admin accounts. After they grabbed those admin accounts, the immediate next step that they did is to dump the domain controller completely. Meaning that in this stage, we're talking about hackers that had access to one machine, two machine, 10 admin account, and now the domain controller, it means that they have access to every username and password in this environment. Now they're starting to gain more power in the environment. Basically, now they control the environment. So the next thing that they did, and that was surprising, and a little bit, to be honest, rude, what I did, instead of keep hacking, they installed a VPN server on the target that they want to grab the information, meaning that instead of hacking every time again and again and again and wander through the network in order to get the information, they just install a VPN directly to them to the places that they wanted. And now what they could do and did is to grab information every time. In every session, they took more than 100 giga of data, compressed data, on these 20 specific individuals. So basically what we managed to prove, we managed to prove that the hackers had complete takeover, complete control on the environment. They basically had a shadow IT department that unrelated to the company that can control each and every one of the aspects of the environment. They can install users, they can remove users, they can block people. If we push them too much, they revoked our credential. So basically, they control the environment completely. But we knew that these type of hackers, they're not going to be um, you know, just focusing on one telco. And we knew that we're talking about something that the magnitude of it, it's much bigger. Meaning that if a country decided to track 20 individuals while they have access to many, many, many millions of people, probably they want to do it not just in this country, probably they want to do it like every place in the world. Not all the telco in the world are our customers. So what we did, we become very intimate with their command and control. What does it mean? Meaning that in order to attack, you need to be connected to some server. So we learned the modus operation. We learned how they operate. We started to learn the attack infrastructure that they created. We become so intimate with this attack infrastructure, not just talking about the command and control, actually really understand how they disguise the servers, how they're establishing a new server every time. And we become so close and we understand them so well that we managed to discover that <clears throat> there is attack globally on more than 10 different telcos. And actually right now we're still tracking them. Meaning that every time that they're creating a new campaign to hack to a new cellular provider, we know that that's what they are doing, and we can have access to this information. In the past uh, weekend, on Saturday, uh, we debriefed more than 25 uh, uh, different telco in the world. Uh, the biggest telco in the world we had one session with them, a very secret session with them to give them all the information and to help them. And the one that they were under attack, we shared with them the information. As you can think, we're talking about espionage and we're talking about tracking individuals and not just grabbing information. I don't know if you heard the news yesterday in Netherlands, the cellular provider was shut down. They sent cops to the street. But these hackers did not decide to do it. What they decided to do, they decided to keep tracking and they built for themselves the biggest esp espionage capability that we saw ever. We published it. This is all those articles are from today, three hours ago. We're trying to push as much as we can the knowledge about it and to alert everybody because we're talking about hacking without hacking. 
Meaning that if a user will take his phone and ask, am I under attack? The answer will be no, because there is zero attack on the phone itself. The attack is actually on the provider that can track him. So, how did we manage to do that? Basically, if you will think about how the hacker work, this is a no, not a new paradigm, but this is a paradigm that they use. We call it low and slow. Meaning, the hackers knew that they can do multiple things, but they can hide themselves inside the noise. Meaning, they will hack one machine, and then they wait. They will hack another machine, and then they wait. Let's say that we push them, they're not going to repeat this thing on this machine. They're just going to wait. In some cases, they waited two weeks. In some cases, they waited a month. That's the reason it took us a year. They were counting on the fact that there is so much data and so much noise in a big environment that you will not be able to correlate what's happened now versus what's happened a week from now and what's happened in two months from now. And they were right. It's very difficult to do that. So what we did in the past few months, we created a new technology. We created a new technology that can grab massive amount of data and correlate uncorrelated event together. As you can see in, in the slide, we're creating a timeline of an attack. And this is done automatically using machine learning and AI in order to correlate things that it's very difficult to correlate. We can replay information from the past and correlate it to something that happened today. Basically, what we do at Cyber Reason is really understand how hackers think, really understand their modus operation, and then create technology in order to break it. This is a big story, um, and we believe that this time we will win. And I believe that this time we will be able to keep pushing them out because we are talking about a massive espionage capability that we have to break. Thank you, everybody.